If you have birds, you will have coccidiosis. If you were to start a, a, a chicken operation on a remote island in the Pacific, I could guarantee you one thing, you would get coccidiosis. It's the only uh, example of uh, an animal health disease where you have to have continuous prevention of the disease in order to profitably grow chickens. The one thing we have to remember is coccidiosis affects all species because it's there if manure is there. Like you say, impossible. Well, it's not. Uh, it doesn't take much to get a to get the infection going. Once you realize that and understand that and embrace that, then you can move ahead in terms of managing the disease. You're not going to completely eradicate the disease, you're going to manage it. Because it's a, the, the multiplication is fantastic, it's exponential. It's exponential. What's good for the chicken is good for the coccidia, okay? It's one of those diseases that's always there, not always uh, uh, visible but definitely always impacting on your, on your performance and bottom line. Coccidiosis and necrotic enteritis happens yearly with significant mortality. Probably since we started confining poultry in, into buildings back in the 40s, we've had to live with this parasite, the coccy. Well, coccidiosis actually is our number one uh, production issue with poultry in the world. Uh, I think the numbers range in terms of billions of dollars uh, in terms of cost to the industry every year uh, from this disease. And of course the reason for that is because coccidia are present in essentially every uh, poultry barn uh, on the face of the earth. You're not just dealing with one disease. It's one disease that we name coccidiosis, but it's actually, you know, four or five different diseases causing lesions in different regions in the intestinal tract. Imeria affects the gut of the bird, um, whether you're talking chickens or turkeys or any other uh, type of fowl. Typically, Imeria or coccidiosis that affects chickens only affects chickens and those that affect turkeys only affect turkeys and similar with geese, pigeons, pheasants, etc. Your bird, whether that's a chicken or a layer or a turkey, is essentially a gut with a bunch of stuff attached to it. And if that gut doesn't work, the rest of the systems won't work either. When you have coccidiosis damage to the gut, to the mucosa of the gut, you affect the absorption ability of the villi to absorb nutrients. Very often when you get gut damage, the most likely organism that you see secondary to coccidiosis is Clostridium perfringens that cause necrotic enteritis. If you have, uh, have an uncontrolled infection in the flock, um, it will continue being a problem because constantly naive birds will get into contact with the, with the organism in the bullet barn or the broiler barn and you will constantly have this disease rolling around in your flock. It's the only natural way that you can transmit coccidia is the oral ingestion of an oasis. That oasis wall is broken in the grinding in the gizzard. That releases the sporocysts, and there's four sporocysts. Each of these has two sporozoids within it. And the sporozoids, which are mobile, uh, have a swimming action. Uh, they, they come out and very quickly they enter a host cell uh, in the intestine, uh, epithelial cell. Then the sporozoid goes on. The coccidia go through a number of asexual divisions within what are now the merozoids in, in the schizonts, which can become very large. And of course, when those burst, they destroy a host cell, which results in this uh, insult to intestinal absorption again because uh, you're having this destruction. There's hundreds of them. The three species that you would see uh, in terms of gross infection and that have impact in uh, broiler production, Imeria cerebellina prefers to uh, sort of get 
immediately to work and infects the duodenum or the upper in uh, intestine, but is capable of infecting cells throughout the intestine. It has very significant impact on intestinal absorption. Imeria maxima um, generally prefers the mid-intestine and uh, also has very significant impact on intestinal absorption. Imeria tenella has a great psychological impact on the producer and, it, and it's often over the years been used uh, to measure the effectiveness of anacoxidiosa. The USS eggs can survive up to 600 days if the environment is right. So if the manure is still around and it didn't get washed and cleaned properly, so it could be affect the broiler crop three crops later if it wasn't removed. Biosecurity is an effective means for the farmer to develop and maintain their program for both industry limiting diseases such as coxie or for foreign animal disease. The premise being is to keep it off your farm or if you find it and have it on your farm to contain it on your farm so it can be effectively managed or removed. It's more a level of making sure that the background noise of that coccidiosis is kept to a minimum and you can do that with good biosecurity. Uh, the worse or the poorer biosecurity that you have, chances are the bigger a challenge you'll have with coxie. Well, I, I, as you can see by the garb I'm wearing, uh, biosecurity begins at our front door. Once you're in, you're in, and nothing from the outside is allowed entrance to the barns anywhere except for the main entrance. Okay, so these shoes I'm wearing, and we provide them for our employees, uh, they have a pair in each barn and then they have a pair, they have their own shoes to go back and forth between barns. How are you doing? And the idea is uh, once you change your footwear in here, you don't go back outside and vice versa. And of course, just to do you spray in. Through uh, the different barns, there are foot baths to clean your feet. Uh, we use a dry foot bath with lime powder. Uh, so just to step in in case you're carrying anything on your feet as you travel from barn to barn. Um, because it is a multiple barn site, there is only one entrance point into the farm and biosecurity is practiced at that point. The problem with uh, osis eggs, they're not a bacteria, they're not a virus or a fungus, they're a protozoa. So disinfectants don't have claims for getting rid of it, so it makes it tougher. So what we've learned over the probably the last decade is the better job a farmer or producer does with cleaning with a heavy duty detergent makes the world a difference. Very important is as well for good coxie results having a proper cleaning procedure done. There's cleaning with water but there's also cleaning with soap. The critical part is it's the right type of soap. It has to be a high alkaline uh, detergent. Uh, so something like Biosolve Plus has a pH of 11.5 so that in the cleaning process, that will help remove a lot of the osis. I washing the barn with hot water since a couple of years, and you can see the deep difference. It's easier for me, and the barn is cleaner, and it takes less time. The difference between a live vaccine and an anticoxidial drug is that the bird develops immunity on a vaccine, whereas with an anticoxidial, we prevent the bird from getting sick but she gets no immunity for the rest of her life, so she's still naive when she gets older, which means she's still susceptible to coccidiosis when she's older. The new technology now is, is the vaccines that have come out uh, that have been showing a fair bit, even I'd say a lot of promise. Uh, so that's just another tool in the toolbox because there's not a whole lot of tools there. There's a couple of ways that you can administer the vaccine. The most common one is drinking water. Second to that and becoming more and more popular is the application in the hatchery at day old uh, via a water spray or a, or a gel droplet application. I guess the other way that you could administer the vaccine would be spraying at the farm, um, which is done less commonly. The application method is actually one of the crucial steps in that the more uniform you can apply the vaccine, the better the protection, the better the coverage in, in, in the flock. Live vaccines are exactly what they say. They're live coccidial oocysts, and we administer them to the birds in a, in a particular dose so that we give them a controlled exposure. The immunity that 
is imparted by those vaccines uh, is not complete until they re-ingested OS system or litter and you know had some secondary secondary infections. The point being that they have an infection but we control the degree of the infection. The only way they're going to build immunity is to reinfect themselves multiple times so they're going to right so it's all about that moderate peak of OS shedding. Like every barn is a little bit different. So anticoccidials are medications that we put into the feed of poultry for prevention of coccidiosis. Anticoccidials are also used in water or feed to treat um, coccidial infections. So we use anticoccidials in the feed because they provide a very effective way of minimizing infections of coccidia in poultry. Uh, need to remember that anticoccidials have been very effective over the years and they're really a, an important way that we control coccidiosis. However, um, they, they're not the only thing we need to do. It really, you need to have you know, good quality chicks and really good management and pay particular attention to uh, ventilation and litter management, keeping litter dry, just to keep populations of coxie down so that they will not uh, go beyond the ability of these anticoccidials to keep the populations in check. Because the bugs always get smarter, and we know that. Managing coccidiosis really is a multi-faceted approach. In managing coccidiosis, you need to be dynamic in your management approach. You need to change as birds' season feed changes. And a good management program for coccidiosis will also pay benefits with all these secondary infections that could or could not happen based on the bird health, the gut health. Everybody generally gets the same thing. You know, they generally get the same chicks, they generally have the same housing, they certainly get the same feed, they get the same medication. But we always have problem farms, and we always have really good farms, and it's all a matter of detail.